Hello, uh, hello and welcome. Welcome to this uh, episode of the Forward Thinkers Talk series. Uh, my name is Dr. Ivo Pezuta. I am the Professor of Economics and Management uh, and uh, uh, at the ISM Business School in Paris and the founder of uh, Ivo Pezuta Forward Thinking Lab. Uh, in this uh, um, episode, um, we generally, in this uh, uh, space, we invite uh, prominent and emerging entrepreneurs company leaders and forward thinkers uh, to share, to, to let them share their uh, thought-provoking uh, ideas, expertise, and uh, uh, understanding of the uh, bigger picture and the business scenario and emerging trends. Um, today, I'm very pleased to have here as our guest uh, this episode, uh, Maurizio Zordan, the president of uh, uh, Zordan uh, Company and uh, uh, forward thinker and uh, brilliant entrepreneur. Um, so uh, Maurizio, welcome, welcome to this episode. Uh, thank you, thank you Ivo uh, for the, this opportunity. I'm uh, happy to be here. So uh, uh, thank you everybody for your time. So I, I'm ready for, uh, for this uh, conversation with you. So. What is the, the first? Yes, thank you very much. Well, the first question I would like to ask is this, uh, Maurizio. Uh, can you tell us something in, in a few words, in a nutshell? What is uh, Zordan, uh, SRL, uh, SB, the benefit company? Uh, uh, and uh, how important uh, uh, is for your company um, in its uh, future, uh, you know, the fact that it is a forward-thinking benefit company and certified B Corp. We know that uh, uh, your company, which is a um, emerging, a leading company in the luxury shop fitting, it's a, has an impressive impact on um, uh, multiple uh, targets, including sustainability, uh, with very high scores. And uh, you know, besides being a top-rated B Corp uh, uh, company in the shop fitting market, it's a really uh, a very interesting and uh, um, unusual organization. Uh, for its culture, for its uh, uh, business model, for its, uh, uh, you know, for its strategy. So I would like to hear from your voice. Uh, what is your take about this? What do you think, uh, um, what's so special about Zordan SRL that you would like to share with us and about its, uh, um, you know, its overthinking approach? Oh, uh, So first of all, uh, I would uh, uh, explain uh, uh, to to the to, to the people that are connected uh, that uh, uh, under our our um, uh, mission that is uh, uh, written nearby our our brand so shaping beauty sustainably since 1965 1965 was uh, the the year when uh, our father founded the company as a small um a uh, small uh, company uh, with a woodworker and uh, and we when we uh came in in the company so when my father well, well, our father was nearby retirement uh, the transition that we applied to the company was a transition that uh, uh you know opened the company to a bigger market uh, with a, a, a bigger uh, perspective, uh, a higher perspective, but we try to maintain uh, in the company the value that uh, the generation before us uh, uh, put in the company. So, for example, you know, woodwork is connected to the wood. The wood is a natural uh, resource and uh, a sustainable resource uh, and so uh, for, for us uh, is, uh, you know, uh, uh, important uh, to maintain this approach uh, to the raw material. And uh, uh, so this is something that we received from uh, the previous generation. And uh, uh, the other, the other uh, things that uh, we, we try to put in the company and to maintain the company is the relation with the people so in the environment where our father grow, all the people inside the company, the small company was, uh, you know, peer people, not, uh, you know, a director 
and uh, an employee but uh, uh, this the, the the relation with the people was uh, very important what uh, you know we had uh, to the previous generation was the approach to the the grow and the number because uh, i my first job was in a big uh, corporation the biggest corporation of our valley the which name was marzotto is marzotto because the company is still working here and uh, uh, this company uh, learned to me the approach to the number. So I was grow as co controller, and uh, this is uh, the, the 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 approach that I bring to the company. So the budgeting, the industrial costs, and these things that uh, help the company uh, uh, in sus in sustaining the growth, because uh, uh, th this is very this is very very important. So. I would say that uh, our story is, uh, you know, the connection between the previous generation and what was the opportunity that uh, the new generation uh, was able to bring to the company. Also, my brother, Alfredo, that I employed uh, in 2006, uh, bring the technical part to the company because he is a mechanical engineer. Uh, so, you know, the new generation bring... Uh, new skills uh, to the old one and so this was uh, uh the, the 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 formula for for grow but uh, we based our grow on solid value that uh, the the generation before before gave us absolutely thank you very much for for this uh, uh first uh, um intro yeah in fact uh Zordan is a company uh, based, as Maurizio correctly mentioned, in uh, Valdagno. This is a, 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 a city in, um, in uh, near Vicenza in uh, Veneto, uh, region of Italy. And uh, um, their heritage is in a region, an area where woodwork uh, and uh, uh, furnishing uh, has it's, it's, a long tradition of uh, excellence. Um, and um, Basically, it's um, you know deep roots in Veneto and long tradition of excellence in woodworking, carpentry workshop, and so on. And I understand the blend, you know, the link between uh, uh, the, the the heritage, uh, the the past, and uh, and the future, and the new capabilities you brought to the organization. Uh, just uh, for the record, uh, your company um, is 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 an important an emerging shop uh, shop fitting. Uh, um, you know, um, player now uh, in, uh, serving uh, the global markets uh, very successfully, if I remember correctly, with 90% uh, uh, or more uh, uh, international uh, sales out of total sales and serving flagship stores of luxury brands like Dior, Bulgari, Van Cleef, Narpels, Piaget, uh, Nespresso, Jeguet, Le Cru, and so many other uh, um, famous international brands. Uh, the, the, the other question I wanted to ask you, uh, Maurizio, is this. Uh, in your company, you said you added something more. Uh, um, I think it, it's really impressive, uh, the, 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 the things you guys did. In particular, uh, the three P's of purpose. You know, purpose, uh, uh, we hear that, that today in many companies, but your company was really um, sort of pioneering this thing way before others. Um, and, uh, it, you know, purpose, the three pieces of purpose, like people, planet, and uh, planet and uh, prosperity, they seem to be uh, very important in your organization, but not just as, a, uh, uh, you know, just a, a marketing uh, uh, message, more as um, a real content, a real mission, and, and a real source of competitive advantages. So you talk about sustainable beauty and, uh, you know, people-oriented organization, customer-centered organization, like key a responsibility to the planet, to the uh, to the to to the social impact, like a key purpose of your organization. Please tell us something more about this three P of purpose yeah. as a source of competitive competitiveness, competitive competitive advantage for your organization. With the planet, uh, uh, when uh, we uh, after the the crisis of two thousand eight, uh, we discover that uh, uh, you know uh, our uh, business model, uh, the world business model was uh, uh, having uh, 
uh, a problem and we discover the sustainability in terms of uh, uh, raw material as the first uh, step uh, to, to work on. And so we started with uh, the the, uh, the the certification for the forest, so FSC or P uh, e S C that are the 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 two main uh, you know standard for taking care of uh, the supplying uh, of wood in the world, and uh, and so because uh, when we approach the Chinese market uh, uh, 15, 16 years ago, we discover that uh, the the bigger industry of furniture in China. Uh, was not respecting this uh, this uh, standard, and so we decided that uh, uh, our grow should uh, incorporate uh, this value, and so we decided to put this uh, very clear. And so the, the first step was uh, saying uh, to the our customer, to our supplier, to our people, okay, we can grow, we can. <clears throat> Uh, do a lot of things, uh, but we have to respect uh, the 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 main uh, raw material that we use. Uh, so the wood, instead of uh, uh, we don't have enough uh, uh, surface in the world for uh, bringing our growth. So uh, this was the first step, and only after. Uh, the COVID, maybe we discover that was uh, these uh, these things that was important for us uh, became important for the the majority of the people in the world. So we were uh, very happy of that about that. So and uh, the second things uh, the, the second P uh, concern people. So you know uh, so the people so our company in in the time. Uh, uh, mostly with our generation became more a service company instead of a manufacturing company and you know that the you can you can uh, serve clients uh, with people so people are uh, an important asset for the company uh, and uh, also the way that the people can uh, uh, you generate. know generate, generate. You know, generate relations at the company is very important for the satisfaction of the client and the result in terms of uh, uh, your also result for the company. So uh, in 2018, we uh, decided that uh, we were ready for moving to a new uh, type of organization where the people uh, were you know more able to uh, to work in in self uh, in a self way and um the other thing that we discover in the time is that uh, you know um, most of the business is concentrated on uh, a choice that are you know made in the short term and we say but sometimes this is not um, uh uh, you know, easy to do because uh, you cannot uh, do the right uh, choice only thinking to the short term, eh? and and also the and so the profit, the the the, the word that we no, normally use for describe the business, uh, so the profit seems uh, something uh, connected with the short terms, eh? and uh, for this reason we decide to use the the, the word prosperity. And uh, uh, because uh, we consider that uh, the prosperity can bring uh, your your think to the a longer term uh, in mm -hmm. terms of uh, uh, choices, uh, and uh, and uh, you can have also a larger panel of beneficiaries uh, 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 instead of uh, shareholder. You can have the stakeholder, Multiple. and so. And, and uh, bring another idea that was uh, to call the, the you know that in Italy we use this uh, this word dependenti that that uh, we have only in Italy uh, and the, the, the translation in English uh, cannot uh, 
be applied because dependent is something for for the tax return and uh, and so we use uh, the word people instead of uh, using dependent the, okay. the, the dependency and so when we put together these three uh three words uh, we discover like uh, in uh, is uh, you know in our logo here i would say yes <laughs> in our logo you can see the three circle of people planet and prosperity that create the, a triangle where where is the place for taking the decision so the decision that you have take are considering the prosperity so the long term uh, perspective medium and long term to, to have the perspective of people and to have the perspective of a planet too. So if you are able to take in the choice in this triangle, maybe you have, uh, you know, a longer time uh, for, uh, you know, uh, putting uh, uh, down the, the result of the choices, but this is more sustainable for, for, uh, for the the life the long life of uh, of the company because uh, we have also to to consider our role as entrepreneur so entrepreneur is someone that uh, uh, maximize uh, the number in his life uh, or is the person that uh, built a stronger future for the company so this is uh, the question that i ask to my colleague so yeah. the company is something for getting money or something for creating value also yeah. for the next generation. Yeah. Yeah. This is Absolutely. the question. Absolutely. <laughs> and I, yeah, that's, thank you very much. And that's very important. You know, this is a circular approach in which uh, people, planet and prosperity, they are somehow connected to one another. They reinforce one another, of course. So that that's definitely a very, very, very important message uh, to see the the company as, as a platform for, for, for value creation for multiple stakeholders, of course. That's very... I, I, I will share with you, uh, Ivo, but this That's... is the, the Christmas tree that we have in, the, in our entrance here. Okay. I will share you. Ah, that's uh, nice. uh, in this Christmas tree, we have uh, uh, the name of uh, the the babies that are born this year in uh, our company. Oh, that, ah, that's so very... We have uh, Costanza, Denise, Jacin, Camilla, Patience, Peace, and Carolina Maria. So what? we. In, wow! In in this company, you, you know, we are talking about the winter uh, of uh, birth in in it's, Italy. It's a uh, <laughs> so if you think to the long term, uh, maybe a company is also able to produce baby. <laughs> okay. And that, so we solve great. our problem. <laughs> that, that's that's really great. You know, I'm, I'm glad that you are mentioning this uh, this really. This contribution, this fact that all these kids are, uh, um, you know, just uh, uh, being, um, you know, they are born in this period, and and that I think that's really a great uh, message of impact for the community and for the uh, uh, employees and the and the whole, uh, um, you know, uh, sense of community. Your organization is actually uh, conveying very very clearly. Uh, but Maurizio, uh, going back to this uh, concept of uh, the um, the culture, um, uh, how, yeah, yeah, you just made me give a great examples of how the company is so uh, paying so much attention, not just to the business, the profit, eh, but no short term, long term, uh, sustainability and inclusion and uh, diversity, equity, uh, and so on, and. Um, and of course, the well-being of the community. So how do you create uh, a, such a positive work culture uh, environment? Uh, and um, most of all, how, how do you build this culture? Uh, I think I, I, once we talked in the past, you were saying something very interesting uh, uh, on, on this matter, uh, such as, uh, uh, you know, uh, when you have trust, 
uh, then things uh, in the organization becomes much easier to to manage because trust is a great glue is a great uh, uh, approach to to build uh, um, great things you know so how do you create a positive uh, work culture how do you create this great uh, um, impact in your organization that allow you know to 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 create such a uh, engaging and motivating environment for all employers from for for, uh, for all the stakeholders it employs the the in the others you know suppliers and uh, uh, partner business partners and the whole community well, probably if i say that uh, if i say that uh, uh, trust uh, is the most important uh, ingredient in business i think that i'm not saying something very you know very new <laughs> so uh so trust is very important uh, also in the relation within people and uh, uh when we moved to the b corp uh, certification we uh, understood that we are creating more trust uh, in our company inside the company and also with the stakeholder outside the clients uh, community and so on and uh, what we can do with trust we we trust that we can you know simplify uh, some uh, you know procedure that you have inside inside the company so to have this maniac control uh, of uh, you know the people the the time so when we discover that uh, opportunity uh, this open our mind also to 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 plan a different uh, a different organization so we say what the people uh, uh, need for you know uh for for managing better uh our uh, our job so the job of the the, the client uh, uh, gave us uh so we discovered that you know the people normally they are able to take uh, also strong decision in their life uh, so we say why they cannot uh, uh, to take this decision or 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 simpler decision inside the company and so we say okay they are able to take a decision uh, what they need they need the information so first of all we need to open the information to the people so to get to give them information about uh, uh you know the the supplier the clients the competitor uh, all the, the the information that normally in the past stayed close inside uh, you know the 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 bottom room so the the <laughs> the, the decision room and uh, uh when uh, uh so we say okay they 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 can they have the information and we give uh, them uh, the possibility to take the decision so yeah. we don't uh, underline the mistake because uh, when you take a decision you take a risk uh, and so it is uh, uh you can fail and uh so and uh, we have uh, we have to move to consider the fail like uh, an opportunity to uh, <laughs> to grow, to understand, uh, and this uh, uh, gave us the opportunity to redesign our company. So we create uh, small uh, companies inside the company uh, that we call team uh, that uh, have uh, all the skills that are necessary for uh, managing a job, and uh, these teams uh, uh, meet. The, the the board of director every three months uh, and uh, they uh, describe how they work uh, what they were able to do uh the the result uh, in terms of uh, prosperity people and planet and so the <coughs> the 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 board of director and also the, the management of the company is uh, you know uh in the possibility to design the to have more time for design the strategy of the company so the operative the operative uh, uh, life of the company is in the end of the teams and the teams uh, are supported by a strong economic control system with a strong erp we moved to, to sap uh, this year and uh, so the board of directors can be concentrated on the on to on on the strategic choice and to work on the culture of the company yeah okay. thank you thank you yes uh so yeah so it, it looks like uh, 
there is a, a lot of empowerment uh, given to the granted to the to the to all employees uh, distributed um, uh, leadership and uh, you know and of course the support of the data with the SAP you know system and uh, measuring and the, and the next step on this uh, excuse me if I no, it's you, okay. It's okay. is uh, that uh, you know we are maybe building new entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So, for example, one of our colleagues uh, resigned from the company one, one month ago and uh, uh, he is uh, creating his own company uh, that will be uh, one of uh, our suppliers. Oh. So, we are also, you know, creating uh, uh, entrepreneurship uh, also because, you know, um, this uh, way to uh, increase the entrepreneurial uh, skills uh, can create also, you know, uh, people that uh, would like to take uh, the risk and uh, to, to to start there as a partner of the company and then uh, to have their own uh, uh, their own uh, growth. Okay, so you, this culture, this mindset of self management, uh, leadership, and uh, you know, empowerment, it's actually becoming a sort of a, a um, you know, a, a lab for training new uh, entrepreneurs, the, the creating and developing new entrepreneurs. So you create an ecosystem that that enables and uh, favors uh, entrepreneurship. So uh, on this matter, I know that uh, you were significantly influenced by um, Frederick Laluc's um, book uh, and theory on uh, uh, evolutionary tier, tier organizations. Uh, uh, so the idea that the organization based on self-management, wholeness, leadership, evolutionary purpose, and uh, uh, in particular, the book on reinventing organizations, how to create organizations inspired by the next stage of human awareness by Frederick Lalux. So that TIL uh, organization model uh, uh, was a sort of a turning point for your organization in the sense that you uh, created this small semi-autonomous teams they were more fluid in their um, interaction, speedier, had more agility, more trust, uh, um, and uh, you know, self-directed teams, and all the things we said about leadership, uh, autonomy, and purpose, and wholeness. Now, uh, one of the things that, uh, and, and you said that very clearly, one of the things that uh, um, I was always uh, very impressed talking with you is that the fact you said that this model is not just a, a lean, agile model that makes it easier and faster to, uh, you know, innovate, to work, to uh, reduce uh, bureaucracy and hierarchy, and especially more people-centered and customer-centered uh, model. You know, you, you're working with many big, prestigious global customers. You have these small teams dedicated to them in this uh, incredible uh, model with the semi. Uh, micro uh, enterprises, small micro enterprises. But most of all, one of the things that impressed me the most, I would like you to, to think, to discuss a little bit about this is how this new organizational model, this steel organization, this uh, uh, leaner organizational model is uh, small teams is actually helping uh, um, to respond more effectively to rising complexity and rising uncertainty. Now we live in a highly uncertain and complex world. And of course, uh, it's difficult for people to take decisions uh, um, in real time. How is this, uh, uh, you know, this, this, this model, this approach uh, helping you uh, in, um, you know, being more resilient to complexity and uncertainties? Oh, mm. Well, first of all, uh, uh, our economics, uh, uh, when we uh, created the budget, so now we are in the season of the budget, uh, the budgeting. Uh, when we uh, complete the budget, the budget process, we verify our break-even point. Uh, and normally our break-even point is uh, uh, positioned at 50% uh, of the, the expected uh, turnover. Uh, so first of all, uh, we need uh, to have uh, this, uh, you know, safety safety margin, and uh, uh, and also the team uh, they are aware about their safety margin. So uh, the the information is very clear for them, and uh, we have some uh, help uh, 
with the function of planning uh, that contribute uh, uh, to balance uh, the, uh, the the workload of uh, every team uh, and also the the workload of the supplier <clears throat> uh, so with this tool uh, it's quite easy to afford also big change in terms of uh, volume uh, during the year uh, to to you know to to bring uh, uh, maybe some uh, uh, mission impossible that come uh, some some time to us, uh, and uh, also to uh, to sustain uh, maybe changement in the people within the company. We have uh, a very low uh, turnover in in the company, uh, but um, I would say that uh, this kind of organization is uh, you know solving. Uh, uh one of the main problems that the company has uh, so is the collaboration between uh, gener different generation of people inside the company uh so uh, we were able to to create uh, you know group of uh, under 30 or over 50 inside the company and to create the 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 the, the collaboration uh, between uh, people that speaks and have a different culture inside the company and uh, focusing on on what is the target so uh, this organization give us uh, uh, this uh, uh, also sense of attraction to the new generation to our company so normally we received about uh, two the, the the average is about two uh uh to uh cv every day okay. so you know we are 100 people almost 100 people here in, in italy and so we receive every labor day the labor day in italy are 230 uh, so every day we received uh, a two cv so we oh. received uh, more than 400 cv a year okay. and, and uh, we are in a in a land here in Vicenza, where the unemployment rate is four percent, four percent, so it's very, uh, very low, and uh, and so we don't have a problem for attracting people, and this is uh, the main risk that the company in our in our land uh, we will afford in the future. And, so, and we, yeah, because if you don't have the people, you can make all your plan on the on the paper, but you are not able to execute. So, uh, and uh, this is, uh, uh, so our main uh, market uh, tool for, uh, you know, when we have the interview with the candidate is our organization. Mm -hmm. So when we put the organization on the table, they say, I like to work there because I know where I, I am. I know all my, my colleague and uh, it's, very, it's very easy to be on board and to work uh, with uh, the rest of the company so yeah so it's 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 a it's a, it's a real um you know uh, uh, an area it's a business that that uh, has a lot of uh, strengths from this point of view in the sense that uh, uh, there is this intergenerational um, engagement and there is this uh, uh, openness uh, and uh, uh, collaboration that makes it uh, uh, very, very, very exciting for people of every age to interact and to uh, express their talents, their their potential. So yeah, I, th I think yeah, that's a very, very good point. It's a people-oriented organization with a great attention to other aspects. Uh, and um, do you, do you see Maurizio this uh, uh, shared value company culture? This uh, focus and orientation the three piece of uh, purpose uh, uh, still uh, um, you know uh, um, holding on and uh, uh, remaining uh, will you be able to retain this agility sense of purpose and the unique uh, uh, people oriented culture as you continue scaling up the business as the business will double or triple in size international would it would do you see that as a, a core value a, a core identity uh, uh, that will, will remain as strong as it is now or will be more challenging to maintain this this mindset, this culture as the company will eventually grow much bigger in the future. 
I, I think that uh, you pronunciate uh, the, the very important people for the future. Uh, the very important uh, word for, sorry, for the future. So that is culture. The, <laughs> so uh, I think that we are, so this kind of organization, this kind of uh, approach, uh, this kind of attention to the people creating us uh, the uh, the consciousness that uh, uh, culture will be the next step uh, to work on. So mm -hmm. creating a strong culture of the company uh, will uh, uh, will be the the insurance uh, for for effort uh, the complexity <clears throat> to be distinguished in in the market uh, and uh, uh, to attract the people that have our same approach uh, to the value uh, mm -hmm. so that the I would say that we already solve the organization uh, matter. Uh, we have the possibility to scale this organization uh, here and in US too. Uh, but uh, the next step is to work on the culture of the company. So probably we will move uh, our marketing fun function to work on that uh, in the next year uh, because we discover, for example, a, a, a very interesting example of a company in Italy, which name is Loccioni, that is based in, in Ancona, uh, that uh, gave us uh, this idea that uh, to have a strong, uh, also I would say, Italian culture of the company will uh, um, will, gree, will give us uh, the next advantage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are a lot of things that you can copy. So if you want to copy our organization chart, it's very easy. Uh, but... Uh, Something that is difficult to copy is the culture. Yeah. The culture uh, is something that you need a lot of time to develop. And so the culture will be the next uh, the next advantage that we want to, to, to get. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. Yes, I the the, the fact that culture uh, is is it's it's a real uh, glue and it's a real source of competitive advantage, a difficult to imitate seems to be one of the uh, elements that's uh, one of the driving forces of your company's uh, um, you know uh, excellence and, uh, and by the way your your company um, is uh, in the last few years has done uh, um, an important acquisition in the US market you were mentioning the US before purchasing acqu acquiring uh, Woodways uh, which is a company uh, specializing in uh, um, you know, in, in the same um, sector, um, and and so um, I uh, and you know I wanted to know how is this acquisition affecting uh, uh, your internationalization strategy and uh, your presence in a very important strategic market for your company, which is the North American market. You know, I, I we know how difficult sometimes it is to integrate companies' cultures. Uh, and business across international markets and how difficult it is to transfer competitive advantages uh, when you do business abroad. But I, I, I think you've also, uh, um, or to create local um, competitive advantages, but I think uh, that um, this acquisition uh, uh, is strengthening even more your internationalization, which of course, as we mentioned before, 70, 90% plus of your sales are in the foreign markets. So that's already very important. What 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 is the contribution that this acquisition did uh, bring to the to to Zordon, and uh, how is this affecting your internationalization strategy? Well, we decided to have uh, an operative base uh, in the United States uh, when uh, our uh, sales uh, in North America became consistent. So when we saw that uh, our sales in uh, North America you know, the average was about 30, 40% a year. So we decided to have an operative uh, base there. So we selected uh, uh, where to be. Uh, we selected company that was a custom uh, uh, company working in the furniture market, uh, a small company. And uh, and so we started to creating, uh, to transfer knowledge, organize uh, this uh, company that work only on the local market. And uh, after, you know, almost, uh, 
you know, uh, eight years from, uh, no, five years from the complete control of the company. And we had also the two year of, COP on, of uh, COVID uh, inside these uh, five years. So it's about three years, uh, four years that we are working on that. Uh, so we uh, we were able to, to create this, uh, uh, this uh, sister company there. Uh, and uh, this is very appreciated from uh, our client because uh, in our business, we are the only company that uh, have a, an operative base in Europe and one other in North America. Uh, so this is a, a great advantage. is a great and a very, very strong effort to, to, to integrate the culture because, uh, you know, the culture of... Uh, uh, American workers is different from our, and also the environment that we have there is very dif different from uh, Italy. But uh, with uh, the help of uh, our people and our manager, uh, at the end we are <laughs> we were able to to run this company, and uh, this is a, a really great advantage because we can speak. Uh, the same language of uh, the the sub uh, subsidiary of our client that are based uh, in us uh, we can uh, use the same uh, the same uh, uh, money because they use a uh, use dollar as um, as uh, currency uh, we can have the same time uh, time zone of our client uh, we have the same regulation technical regulation and we, uh, in, in this way, we were able to reduce the emission of uh, uh, carbon. And so it's a very, a great advantage for us. So if you ask me where the company could grow uh, more fast in the, in the next year, I should uh, answer you in our sister company in uh, US because uh, uh, the market there is very, very important. And, and with this organization is also, this organization is also, uh, you know, uh, useful for that uh, in the uh, U.S. So is, you know, quite, uh, I would say quite an international way for organized the company. It's not uh, connected to the Italian culture. Our uh, organization could be, you know, also... Uh, used in the U.S. Yeah, the fact that you are based there with your own company, evidently, allows for many benefits uh, logistically. You know, the fact that you, <laughs> you are already there, you don't have to transport a lot of stuff, but also the fact that you, uh, as you said correctly, you are uh, learning and gaining more of the local culture and mindset. Logic. So you're closer to the, more proximity to the customers. So that, that of course, helps uh, understanding the market uh, much better. And I think you said once that you have five uh, uh, regional office uh, in the different uh, parts of the U.S. <laughs> so you can actually better serve your clients with sales organizations, yeah. you know, Northeast, Northwest, Northwest yeah. South Central, something like that. Yeah, I remember that. Okay. And uh, uh, one, one, one more thing, uh, Maurizio, if I can. Um, I know that you, as you said, um, the organization is uh, very, very much uh, committed to the uh, sustainability, to the uh, environmental, social impact, and to the you know all, all the uh, climate uh, neutral targets for the EU, and of course all the uh, other um, you know the SDG sustainability development goals of the United Nations and decarbonization. You've been in the one of the you know big um, um, advocates and uh, organ committed uh, organizations on these matters uh, since the since uh, the early days. Uh, and I was wondering, um, when you think about your uh, latest uh, impact report, uh, uh, um, what are the achievements uh, you are most proud of? Uh, um, I know you do many things uh, in terms of sustainability, but, and uh, um, if I remember correctly, uh, uh, you have been uh, um, granted the, uh, the during the recertification of the B Corp uh, 
ratings you've been uh, uh, granted uh, during the certification 2020, an impressive score of 106.5, 106.5, which is really very high. I don't know if you had other recertification more recently, but uh, um, I was wondering, and I, I remember that you're doing impressive stuff, you know, on this side. It's really part of your uh, strategy, strategic commitment, and in particular, just for the record, uh, your firm has a business model very much focused on CO2 reduction, on uh, widespread use of renewable energies, uh, environmentally friendly certified materials, water conservation uh, practices, water efficient manufacturing practices, and on sustainable forestry and uh, regenerative uh, practices with uh, great attention to biodiversity protection and circular economy. And just as the latest, one of the last, but not least uh, uh, important data uh, is that your company has uh, almost 95% of uh, uh, waste, which is uh, a firm's waste, which is recycled. Now, given these impressive things, and recently I remember your new headquarters in Valdagno, Vicenza, Italy, has also obtained uh, leadership in energy and environmental design gold certification, the lead gold certification that, as we all know, is a framework then that ensures that your uh, premises, your, 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 your building complies with the highest standards in terms of health, efficient, uh, efficiency and carbon uh, um, control and the cost savings green buildings. Now, given this situation, how, what fair really, uh, uh, what are the, the, the achievements on your latest impact that uh, gets you most excited, most proud of? So, uh, you can find our impact report uh, in the in the chapter of sustainability or, or, may, uh, or what we call a sustainability in our uh, website. Uh, um, we are now in the process for uh, obtaining uh, the recertification B Corp. Uh, in the next uh, weeks, uh, we will uh, have uh, the new the new Let's evaluation. Go. Let's go. Uh, probably we will increase uh, 100 point, 106. Uh, uh, we are very very close to the maximum in the in the governance, uh, also in the clients part of B Corp. Uh, we need uh, to work uh, on the. On the on the community, and uh, we need to work uh, also on uh, the people. What I'm uh, very proud of uh, is that we were able to connect uh, our approach to su the sustainability with uh, the the low carbon footprint approach uh, to the, the the business of our client. So what I'm very proud of about our team. Uh, in particular, my brother Alfredo uh, was able to transform our value in terms of uh, approach to the respect of uh, the, the the planet in uh, uh, you know a service that we offer to our client. So this was the the main the main goal that we were able to achieve, uh, and so now our business model. Uh, is more is more sustainable also in terms of uh, economics uh, because mm -hmm. uh, now we uh, founded uh, a stronger relationship with uh, our client so uh, instead uh, so we, we moved from uh, uh, producer to service supplier and now we are becoming consultant of the client so and using uh, our approach uh, to the sustainability for me, is no is the maximum that I can uh, uh, consider as a result. So for for me, I'm very happy uh, of that. And uh, the next step will be uh, share with our uh, with our uh, workers, with our people, part uh, ten percent of uh, the share and uh, to to have them 
uh, in the board of on their representative in the board of director this will be the next step so engage the people not only in the result in the you know in the day by day activity but also on the strategy so this will be the next uh, step that uh, i'm uh, uh, personally working on yeah and uh, yeah thank you very that's really very that's very very interesting indeed very interesting and uh, um yeah and and as you were mentioning the cfp you know the carbon footprint of product ones that uh, you have developed for measuring the impact of the carbon reduction on this uh, uh, um, prototypes, whatever uh, projects you are developing for your clients. But uh, uh, in particular, I know that you are also looking very carefully this uh, um, this part, you know, the part of the uh, um, uh, su sustainability um, targets, uh, climate neutrality targets, and uh, I imagine more recently even the latest uh, Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directives in, in Europe, the SCSRD, and all the impact that has on uh, stakeholders, on the uh, uh, you know assessment of the impact in terms of the materiality, double, double materiality matrix, and also uh, scope one, scope two, scope three. And in particular, I remember talking with you and you were saying to me, I'm not taking the, flight, the plane because it does impact scope three. <laughs> so you're taking the the car or the or the trade to avoid the, <laughs> the pen, penalizing scope three, which is the indirect emissions. You know, so you you actually very very personally and the whole organization very much uh, committed to measuring and uh, improving the impact. And uh, I think everything in your organization proves that thing. So uh, you are very dynamic in this uh, uh, dynamically working on this. I, I'm glad that you expect a better, even better score, which is already <laughs> very high and even higher for your next, uh, um, um, you know, for your, for your next uh, assessment, for your next, uh, uh, the uh, recertification of the uh, B Corp uh, um, certification accreditation. Uh, and hey. uh, now, uh, now, now I have to go because I have a... Uh... No problem. I'll let you go. Let you go. So uh, thank you very much, Maurizio, for your time. Very insightful talking with you. It's always very brilliant to have a, a, a power thinker uh, sharing his idea. Thank you very much and talk to you soon. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks Hello, so. everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.